Hello guys and welcome. This is Revolution and on today's video what we are going to be discussing is how powerful the antagonist is in the new Dragon Ball Fighter Z game who happens to go by the name of Android 21. So if you're playing Dragon Ball Fighter Z right now and you haven't completed the three story arcs on Fighter Z, there will be story elements contained in this video so we can get to the bottom of how strong Android 21 truly is. So if you do not want to be spoiled, I am sorry this video isn't for you right now. Unfortunately, talking about the story elements is imperative to finding out how strong she is. By all means, go to my library and check out some videos that won't spoil anything for you. And once you do complete those three story arcs, do come back and I'm sure we can have this discussion together. But there will be game spoilers in this video. This is your final warning. If you're still watching after this, I can only assume you want to be spoiled or you've completed those arcs. So for those of you still watching, I think you can agree with me that Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a fantastic game. I'm thoroughly enjoying Dragon Ball Fighter Z. But to find out what Android 21's power was, with coordinates to the storyline, we had to find out where it would loosely fit within the Dragon Ball Super timeline. Now, this was no easy task to track down where it would fit along the story of Dragon Ball Super. Obviously, this story itself isn't canon to Dragon Ball Super itself. There are three arcs that all contradict each other. We have the warrior arc, we have the enemy arc, and we have the android arc, and all three contradict each other. Although they all seem to follow the same through line, kind of how the manga and the anime of Dragon Ball Super do. Same through line, different plot devices. So when I say where it would fit with the Dragon Ball Super timeline, I really do mean it fits loosely. It cannot fit perfectly. There are too many contradictions. So especially for those of you who have completed the three story arcs in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, we are going to be sticking mainly to the Super Warrior arc where the link is with Goku. Unlike the Android arc, in this arc, Android 21 doesn't split off into her two personalities good Android 21 and evil Android 21. You fight the final villain who seems to be a cohesion of both the good and bad sides of Android 21, though Whis does mention at the end of the arc that Android 16 was trying to save someone. You don't actually find out what it was about until you do the Android arc. So the arcs do lend to each other and you can give and take certain plot devices, but ultimately they end differently. However, the Super Warrior arc ends with basically all of the Z Warriors basically taking out Android 21, all with a combined special attack where they all use their signature moves. This includes Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Gotenks, even Majin Buu, and even Krillin Tien and even Yamcha get in on the act. But after an intense battle where it's clear even the likes of Goku and Vegeta are tired and worn out from the battle, it takes their combined efforts to defeat Android 21. But to find out how powerful Android 21 is, we need to know how powerful these people that beat her were at that specific time. And that's why it's important to know where it is in relevance to Dragon Ball Super's timeline. So we know that this arc takes place sometime during Dragon Ball Super's timeline simply because Beerus and Whis show up in the arc. Obviously, they were only introduced to Whis and Beerus during Battle of Gods, but it seems to be beyond that as they're all on friendly terms. Then, of course, Goku and the gang bump into the likes of Frieza and even Cell, but in a little short scene between Goku and Frieza, they both mention the fact that with the energy suppressing waves being emitted, that they cannot achieve their golden and blue transformations. So it's clearly beyond the resurrection of F-Saga. And just to add to that, when you reach level 40 with Vegeta, he unlocks the Super Saiyan Blue form. And then if you take on Frieza with that transformation, there is a short scene where they talk about their fight in Resurrection of F. So now we at least know that Android 21 on the Supreme World of the Kais was fighting Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. But how far along in their Super Saiyan Blue states were they? As we know from the series itself, they got a lot stronger in that transformation alone. Well, after finding a unconscious suppressed Majin Buu, Goku comments that this is exactly how Buu was during the written test. Obviously, 
that written test is referring to the written test they did for the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 God of Destruction tournament. So as they're talking past tense about the God of Destruction tournament, it is clearly past that as well. Also, just to add, when you unlock Super Saiyan Blue Goku by getting to level 40 in the story mode, he can use Super Saiyan Blue as well, just like Vegeta, but Goku is able of utilizing the Kaioken when you use your super move. As we know, the inception of Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken was against the legendary assassin hit at the end of the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 tournament. So we at least know that this arc would take place post the God of Destruction tournament. However, from here on, the definitive statements placing this arc in Dragon Ball Super's timeline really become vague. I've heard some arguments claiming that this arc could be just before the Tournament of Power, but then I would argue, well, Majin Buu's awake, so it cannot be just before the Tournament of Power. And I've heard some people argue that it could be after the Tournament of Power, right before the end of Z. I feel after the Tournament of Power is a bit more likely than just before the Tournament of Power, but I still think that's unlikely. The biggest argument for after the Tournament of Power is obviously you play with Ultimate Gohan and he doesn't re-achieve that transformation until episode 88 of Dragon Ball Super. However, even though it's a contradiction, I argue that they have simply used the Ultimate Gohan design because that is his custom design for his character on the game. We also see Goku and Vegeta constantly in their Super Saiyan forms throughout the story arc, despite the fact it would literally be burning through their stamina. It's not something they would do naturally. I know Goku and Gohan did in the Cell games, but they are far past that now. There is also a cutscene where Super Perfect Cell tells Gohan he is weaker than what he was when he originally fought him in the Cell games. And as we know, Ultimate Gohan, post episode 88 of Dragon Ball Super, has increased his power magnificently. And there's another cutscene where Goku is talking to Super Perfect Cell about Cell's time in Hell. And Goku says he's never been to Hell. Obviously in Dragon Ball Super episode 94, Goku goes to retrieve Freezer for the Tournament of Power in Hell. So he has been there. So this leads me to believe that this Super Warrior arc involving Android 21 is loosely placed in between the Universe 6 arc and the Future Trunks arc in Dragon Ball Super, and I will emphasize that word loosely. So at this point in this story, she is taking on a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, as well as the rest of the Z Warriors, who are pretty much fodder at this point in Dragon Ball Super's timeline. But the fact is, she isn't just taking them on one at a time, she's literally taking them all on. This would easily place her beyond the Super Saiyan Blue Goku that fought Hit in the rematch on planet Earth. Now obviously in the cutscene when you see her get destroyed, you see that Goku and Vegeta are in their Super Saiyan states. You can look at this two ways, either Android 21 has beaten them down so they're only able to achieve Super Saiyan at that point and they do look pretty worn down, or that basically the developers hadn't created a cutscene involving the Super Saiyan Blue transformations once you'd unlocked Super Saiyan Blue. I completed this arc originally without unlocking Super Saiyan Blue. But the fact is you can unlock Super Saiyan Blue and there are cutscenes leading up to this finale where you see them in their Super Saiyan Blue transformations talking to other characters involved in this story. Of course, this fight takes place on the Supreme World of the Kaids, so those suppression waves that were suppressing Goku and the gang on Earth are no longer in effect. They are fighting Android 21 at full power, and Android 21 is fighting them at full power. So based on this arc being in between the Universe 6 and the Future Trunk Saga, I would place Android 21 at Super Saiyan Blue Tournament of Power Levels, possibly with Kaioken times 2 or 3. If you're one of the people who believes it's still after the tournament's power, obviously you can scale her power right up. Technically what I'm going for is the low ball power, and I don't entirely rule out it being after the tournament's of power, I just think there's a lot to suggest that it's between the God of Destruction saga and the Future Trunk saga. But despite her impressive amount of power, that's not all she's about. You must remember that Android 21 possesses the cells of Majin Buu himself, she has the same 
body composition as Majin Buu, which means she possesses extraordinary regeneration abilities, never mind also possessing the regeneration abilities of Piccolo and Super Perfect Cell. She also has incredible endurance because she has the cells of Frieza, and we've seen Frieza survive Hakaishin attacks. She also possesses the cells of the Saiyans, and of course, she is an android, just like Cell. So basically, when she eats or absorbs somebody and she eats them, it increases her power exponentially. In this arc, she did eat <laughs> Frieza, who is capable of his golden transformation, and she also ate Super Perfect Cell, who claimed that he'd increased his power whilst training in Hell. And it was also noted in the Android arc that her power increased from eating Super Perfect Cell more than anyone ever could have imagined. Just like Majin Buu, she can learn attacks just by seeing it once. She learned the instant transmission of seeing Goku use it one time only. Android 21 is quite simply a monster. Obviously, this is fiction, so the antagonist will always lose. However, just imagine if she successfully fed on Goku and Vegeta in that final chapter of that arc. She would be pushing Jiren levels. So considering a Goku way more powerful than what he was in Battle of Gods, couldn't take her on alone, that suggests that Android 21 is at least multi-universal, massively faster than light, fourth dimensional, with optimal regenerating abilities and the abilities to learn move off first sight, with a power level relevant to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku from the Tournament of Power. That can increase her power exponentially, if she eats you, providing you are strong enough. So guys, there you have it. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with my assessment of Android 21? Do you think she's weaker? Do you think she's stronger? Do you think I've got the placement in the timeline right? If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments section. Keep it civil. If Android 21 was going to turn you into a food item, what would it be? I'd definitely be a sausage. If you like my videos, make sure you lend me your energy and smash that like button. Every like truly helps this channel. You fully have my gratitude. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and you'll be notified every time I release new content. Here's some more videos on your screen right now, which I'm sure you will enjoy. Until next time, Ad Astra.